Hello and welcome to TNT. Good to have you with us again, friends. And thank you to all the people that have subscribed to the channel. You can do the same by clicking in the description down below. It'll say something about subscriptions. Just give that a big tick. Now, uh, we do have uh, quite a few stories today about tourism and particularly flights. Seems the new government is really intent in trying to boost tourism to try and give a bit of a kick along to the economy in the last quarter in Thailand this year. Now, a few weeks ago, they were talking about uh, changing the visa process for particularly Indian and Chinese tourists. And also, perhaps, uh, there was some suggestions they may extend the, uh, the time for visa waivers from, say, 30 days for many countries uh, up to, well, it could have been 45, 60 or 90 days. Nothing was specified. That part of the news has sort of vanished and it's really only just left this Chinese visa waiver. That's about all that's uh, sort of come out of all this. Let's see exactly what is being reported at the moment. And Bangkok Post says the AAT backs proposal for extra flights. So obviously more flights will help with getting more tourists around and into Thailand. The Airline Association of Thailand has agreed to the Transport Minister's suggestion to reopen unused flight slots to expand commercial traffic at airports. I figure the only reason they're unused is because the airlines have decided there's just not enough traffic to request those extra slots. Anyway, let's proceed. And the association's also supporting the government's push for a new airport to be built in Panga. I'll get to that a little bit later. A bit further down, the association represents Thailand-based carriers, Thai Vietjet, Thai Air Asia, Thai Air Asia X, which is the international part of uh, Air Asia, Bangkok Airways, Thai Lion Air and Nok Air. They're also backing calls for the Defence Minister to surrender unused flight slots held by the Royal Thai Air Force at airports under the AOT management. I think there's six airports around the country under AOT management. And talking about the new airport at Panga, which has been backed by the new Prime Minister, Mr Putipong said the AAT will also raise the subject with the Transport Minister. Also, as the president of Bangkok Airways, Mr Putipong said his airline is keen on investing in the Panga Airport project. And the airline owns and operates three airports in Koh Samui, Trat and Sukhothai. And we've spoken over the years about how that monopoly at the Koh Samui Airport has probably hampered tourism into the Gulf Island. So I'm not sure if a monopoly on an airport is a good idea. And they're saying that uh, Koh Khloi would be a suitable location for the airport, said Mr. Putipong. So Koh Khloi is uh, an area that you drive through on the way to Turtle Beach, to the uh, Thai Muang area, go through it every single day. It's only about uh, 10, 15 minutes north of Phuket. A lot of flat land around there, and I suppose suitable for the establishment of a new airport, given that the Phuket airport really has very little room to expand if any at all, and that uh, the area is going to see increased tourism over the next few years. And the airports of Thailand and the Department of Airports has also expressed interest in investing in the airport at Phang A. Well, it looks like there are at least three organisations looking to support the Prime Minister's uh, vision of a new airport in Phang A. And, uh, well, I'll be very parochial for a moment and saying I've just uh, opened up my first Airbnb and uh, bookings available from the 7th of October. Uh, that's on Airbnb, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to uh, check out that Airbnb listing for my new beach house. On with the news, and Bangkok Post reporting Thai preps for visitor spike. So this is the national carrier. What are they going to do to help flights around Thailand and Thai Airways International is ready to support the government's efforts to attract more international visitors by adjusting its flight schedules to accommodate more tourists, particularly from China. And the CEO said yesterday the flag carrier will make some adjustments to some of its most popular routes ahead of the upcoming tourist high season. And he says speaking with the Prime Minister, they discussed the anticipated spike in the number of foreign arrivals this year in light of the temporary visa waiver program for Chinese nationals next month. Again, still no official announcement about this, but everybody's talking it up. 
And starting on October the 1st, for example, Thai will deploy a wide-body aircraft on one of its morning services between Bangkok and Phuket. Yes, amazingly, uh, up to now, since COVID-19, the national airline has had no direct flights into Phuket, uh, the second most popular tourist destination in Thailand after Bangkok. Uh, this is quite surprising. They used to service the route with a Boeing 747-400, on one of the largest aircrafts flying around. Yep, they used to fly the jumbo all the way from Bangkok to Phuket every day. And Thai also plans to increase flight frequencies to various destinations in China starting December the 1st, starting with six flights a week to Beijing and then increasing to daily flights to the Chinese capital. But uh, just back to Phuket, for example, just saying the national airline doesn't have any flights into the island. Well, another airline, for example, has uh, nine flights. This is the schedule just on any random day later in the month, showing that they've got nine flights from Bangkok to Phuket every single day. And uh, there are a lot of other airlines, Nok Air, Bangkok Air and Air Asia, Lion Air servicing that particular route. Very strange that Thai Airways hasn't been trying to get a slice of that action. And here are the other proposals for Thai Airways to start flying a bit more domestically, uh, partly taking over from its Thai Smile routes as it's phasing out Thai Smile and integrating it into the, uh, the major airline. And then they're talking about flights between Bangkok and Chiang Mai, Bangkok and Udon Thani, Bangkok and Krabi, Bangkok and Konkan. And then a new route there between Bangkok and Konkan. Flights there from Bangkok to Naratiwas, <laughs> Bangkok to Chiang Rai, Bangkok to Hat Yai, and Bangkok to Ubon Ratchatani. So the national airline we might see at some of these domestic airports in the future. One, as they phase out the Thai Smile brand. And secondly, as the government encourages them to help with uh, moving tourists into and around the country including LGBTQ plus customers. Associated Press reporting Thailand's LGBTQ plus community draws tourists from China looking to be themselves. And the story starts by talking about a person called Xinyu Wen. And she says the LGBTQ plus people from China, frequently scorned and ostracized at home, are coming to Thailand in droves drawn by the freedom to be themselves. Another Chinese national, Owen Zhu, a gay real estate agent in Bangkok who sells houses to Chinese clients, said many are also coming to stay. He estimates some two-thirds of his clients are LGBTQ+, many of whom buy apartments to live in, part-time or full-time. And the Associated Press article says being gay is not illegal in China, Though other Asian countries have strict laws around homosexuality, such as Malaysia, which announced in August that anyone in possession of an LGBTQ plus themed watch could be jailed for three years. And that was a bit of a storm in a teacup. But LGBTQ plus people in China face other pressures to conform that make the free expression of their identities difficult. So it seems that the, uh, the pink dollar or the pink yuan is part of this drive for increased tourism from China. That story from AP. By the way, big thank you to Five Star Marine. They've been a great supporter of this program. And they'll also take you out on a bespoke charter tour off the island of Phuket around Panga Bay. They've also got their October 7th birthday charity bash. And a special discount for TNT viewers. All that's in the description below. TNT on a Tuesday and a lot of talk over the past couple of weeks about who is going to be Thailand's new police commissioner. A big job and it's been seen over the past couple of months that the person might be that postcard boy, Surachat Hakpan, taking over the top job. But ThaiPBSWorld.com reports that Police General Torsak is tipped to be the new National Police Chief. And in a move described as a win-win, the Deputy Police Commissioner, uh, Police General Roy, will be appointed the National Security Council Chief, paving the way for Police General Torsak to become the new Police Commissioner. This is from an informed source, unnamed by Thai PBS World. Both Roy, the most senior deputy commissioner of the four, and Torsak, 
the second most senior will reach their retirement age next September. And the source said that it's likely that the PM will transfer Roy to be the National Security Council Chief and appoint Torsak as the new police commissioner. So what happened to Surachat Hakpan? Let's read. ThaiExaminer.com did a big story yesterday saying big joke reported in the running to be Thailand's next national police chief in coming weeks as decision looms. Yes, it is true that uh, the deputy police chief, Surachat Hakpan, does have a nickname. What? how many times will be reminded about that? From closing the kingdom's biggest mass murder case, to rescuing trapped Thai nationals abroad, to leading delegations to foreign countries, as well as rooting out corruption within the Royal Thai Police, General Surachat Hakpan has an impressive track record. And says General Surachat Hakpan, who is also known as Big Joke, is in the running to become the country's next national police chief. And the Thai examiner seems to have a bit of a stutter because they keep on telling us about Big Joke. He's also known as Thailand's Big Joke a bit further down, affectionately known as Big Joke. And then, oh, General Surachat Hakpan or Big Joke. Further down in the article, General Surachat or Big Joke. And then, oh, here we are, controversial removal of Big Joke. And, ah, Big Joke, Big Joke. And another one, Big Joke. Oh, and it looks like I missed one there. So it looks like the Thai examiner is very intent on us knowing that the deputy police chief does have a nickname. But of course, the main story there is uh, two different reports and two different feelings about who is going to be the next police commissioner in Thailand. Now, just referring to that last story, I think uh, just reading the tea leaves, it looks like General Torsak may become the next police commissioner and he has to retire within a year. I think that will be when we'll see General Surachat Hakpan, who's probably much better known in the public, uh, will become the police commissioner in Thailand. Now, speaking of police, a very sad epilogue to, well, quite a big story. The Bangkok Post reporting the supervisor of cop murdered at the Kam Nan's party commits suicide. And police Colonel Washira Yaothai Song, the commander of Highway Police Subdivision 2, shot himself dead in a house in Patum Thani province yesterday. And the officer was the immediate supervisor of the police major Siwakorn of the, the same highway subdivision, who was murdered by a gunman at a dinner party at the house of Prawin Changklai, alias Kamnan Nok, last Wednesday. And police colonel Washira was 44. He was one of the 25 police officers who also attended the party and are also being investigated. And the story also reported in Thai PBS World, Officer suspect in Kamna Nok's shooting case kills himself. And KhaosodEnglish.com reporting Thai police are shaken by the death of a fine cop. It says that the police colonel Washira shot himself on the same day as the cremation for his subordinate, Police Lieutenant Colonel Sivakorn, who was 32. And the story says that Police Colonel Washira had been pressured as the person who called Police Lieutenant Colonel Sivakorn to go to the dinner party. And Police Lieutenant Colonel Sivakorn, who received praise from the public for being a good and honest police officer, was shot seven times and killed by the gunman who was close to Kamna Nok at the party after he refused to help Kamna Nok's relative ask for a transfer position. The story says this case not only led to government action against the local influential people, but also triggered an extensive investigation within the police. Now, it was a big day in Parliament yesterday when the new government outlined its policy agenda. Let's see some of the main points. And Nation Thailand reporting Sita highlights urgent economic measures in his government's policy statement. And both Houses of Parliament convened yesterday, starting at 9.30am. And the government's policies for economic recovery includes debt relief, reducing energy costs and reforming the country's energy consumption structure, generating tourism revenue, amending the constitution to promote democracy, So it looks like that has indeed risen to the top of the pile and will be part of the government's agenda. 
and the Premier also discussed measures for creating opportunities, improving quality of life and increasing the income of the Thai public. And these measures include economic diplomacy, digital technology development, public-private partnerships and investment in infrastructure. Well, it seems to be somewhat of a word salad, really nothing specific, and this is part of the criticism that came up yesterday, that there weren't any real substantial details provided for a lot of these, well, just ideas. As for the military, the government plans to transition to a voluntary military service, and for example, this is another one of the policies that didn't have any date supplied, didn't have any numbers or any particular method of going about transitioning to a voluntary military. Uh, improve military training, reduce the number of high-ranking military officers and align military strength with current and future roles. As for social policies, the government will combat the scourge of drugs and promote medical and health-related cannabis use, improve health care and create a fair and equitable society. It will also address environmental issues such as the PM2.5 air pollution that of course mostly concerns people in northern and northeastern Thailand. The problem with that one is they're going to have to speak to the governments in the nearby countries where most of that smoke originates. Pretty hard to address that one, but it's in their list of policies. And ThaiPBSWorld.com says that the Move Forward MP says government overestimating the benefit of the digital wallet scheme. So Move Forward now in opposition in the digital wallet scheme. Uh, that's the 10,000 baht they're going to give to all Thai people over the age of 16. Let's see what they said. And the Move Forward Party List MP has claimed that the government has overestimated the benefits of the digital wallet scheme in boosting the economy, as the timing's not right. And he said during a speech yesterday that the digital wallet should be implemented at a time when the economy is contracting, not when it's expanding as it is now in Thailand. And he claimed that similar schemes implemented in Japan during the COVID pandemic resulted in less than a 1% fiscal multiplier. And he said that the slowdown of the Thai economy is mainly due to the drop in Thai exports over the past 10 months consecutively, mostly due to economic contraction in China, which is one of Thailand's main trading partners. And he pointed to the restrictions on the use of the 10,000 baht handout under the scheme. For instance, the money must be spent within a four kilometre radius of the residence of the recipient, adding that there are many people who do not live in their registered residences and in the countryside there may just be a handful of stores in the area. So the Move Forward Party, now in opposition, having a slash at the government's uh, policies, including the digital wallet. But uh, some good news, at least for a python who took a wrong turn in Pattaya. And the giant python causes electrical fire in Pattaya. The snake survives. It looks like this snake caused an electrical fire and the snake survived the incident with minor burns and injuries. The outage lasted for almost three hours at some venues and condos in the area. Rescue workers arrived to find flames vigorously burning on a power pole. And it took about 20 minutes to finally subdue the flames. And to their surprise, the rescue team found a large python weighing around 15 kilograms, measuring about three meters in length. And there it is, uh, probably a quite lucky python to have survived that uh, electri electrical fire. And the rescue worker stated they'll treat the python's injuries before releasing it back into nature. And it's unclear if the incident will set back seemingly never-ending construction in the area. So the PatiaNews.com making sure they can get a quick dig in at the end of that particular story. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Please support our sponsors, Five Star Marine. And there's a listing to my new Airbnb available for bookings after October the 7th. Uh, there's a, a link in the description below to that as well. Thanks for watching today. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.